Hello everybody and welcome back to Guided Hacking. This is Fred HK and today we'll be looking at the Blacknet malware. I want to begin by saying thank you to all of you for receiving my previous video so well. I'm really happy with the feedback given and hopefully some of the feedback can be implemented into this video. So today we're going to be looking at the Blacknet malware. This malware was shared on GitHub and has since been quite a prolific piece of malware. In my last video, I mentioned that I'd be analyzing the C2 communications of Paradise Clipper, but after reversing the C2 communications, I've decided that they aren't as interesting as the malware we will discuss today. We'll be looking at intercepting C2 traffic, how to decrypt it based on the encryption routine found within the binary, and then how to fake our own C2 to demonstrate getting the malware to execute commands based on our fake C2. Let's get into it. Blacknet is a botnet malware uploaded to GitHub for the purpose of learning and research, which is clearly untrue as the malware has a lot of malicious functions. Since its upload to GitHub, it has been constantly developed up until the author was banned. The author provided a PHP C2 panel and a pre-compiled builder for the malware, along with the source code to the malware. I want to concentrate on the C2 communications within this video, since I believe that it is very worthwhile to learn how a researcher can analyze these C2 communications. I've gone ahead and built a build of the malware and I'm going to run it on my system to show that it'll connect to my local C2. And we can see here that it's connected to my local C2. The functions of the malware are quite long, but in general the malware can DDoS steal browser cookies and other information along with send spam and steal any files from disk. The list of functions is incredibly long. The main use of this malware is to also use it to herd infections to other second stage binaries. Blacknet is running on my computer and I can see its C2 communications through Wireshark. Within Wireshark we see all kinds of requests being made to PHP files on my local host. When inspecting these requests, we see a lot of different parameters being sent and they appear to be encoded. The malware makes these requests constantly every second, which is very likely to be detected by an antivirus as it's spamming the network. When first run, the malware will check into the C2 to provide the C2 with information about the infection. Looking at the first check-in, the malware makes the C2, it is becoming more and more apparent that the malware is obfuscating any data being sent to the C2. Even though I have the malware source, I'm going to act as if I do not have it so that we can look at this malware from a stance of being oblivious to see how the C2 traffic works. After first checking the malware traffic, we'll now move on to the source code to see how it obfuscates the traffic. Because the malware is written in C-sharp, it should be easy to reverse and understand the protocol being used. DNSpy is a good utility to reverse C-sharp binaries and will give you a comprehensive idea of how the malware was written. Looking in the decompilation of this binary, and after some reversing, I've found the function that will encode traffic going to C2 in the binary. It will create a socket to the C2 and use base64 encoding on any parameters and data going to the C2, which is done by the function here called EMB. Because base64 is only an encoding function, it makes our analysis of different binaries of this malware family much easier. Looking at the initial check-in of the malware and using a tool called Cyberchef to decode the check-in data, we can see what is actually being sent to the C2. For this malware, it was very easy to understand the C2 communications, but in other more complicated pieces of malware, encryption may be used, such as AES and commonly XOR. What's nice about Blacknet is that all of the PHP files that it requests are named properly as to what they do so that we can see and use this as an indicator for what C2 communications are doing. Sometimes for a reverser, it is beneficial to emulate a C2 instead of hoping that the real C2 will carry out tasks that you want to analyze. For some malware, they will not execute any functions until a check-in with the C2 has been accomplished. So instead of a malware reverser having to patch this functionality in the case of a dead C2, they can instead emulate a C2 to bypass this functionality. This is what we'll do in this video to show how easily it can be done by a reverser. To emulate a C2, I'll be using a tool that I commonly use during my research called FakeNetNG, 
What it will do is override your DNS and routing settings on your VM and point all outgoing traffic into its receivers, allowing you to return whatever response you want to a given request. This is great for us because it means that we could take all of the C2 communications of BlackNet and send them to a local server where we can provide the malware with the response it needs to trigger a given functionality. So what I'm going to do is start FakeNet. And then if I go ahead and run the malware, We can see that the malware is trying to check in with the gate, but it isn't getting anywhere because FakeNet is only providing a default response, which we can see if I browse to a site. This response is not what the malware is expecting, so it may crash or just continue trying to request and check in with the C2. To get the malware to receive a valid response, I'm going to point FateNet to a local Python script, which I can use to interact with the malware and also log any commands and traffic that is coming to our build. First, we must edit the default FakeNet configuration so that any requests made to our C2 are instead made to a Python script, which FakeNet will run. To do this, I've uncommented this custom part within the default FakeNet configuration this comes in every new install of FakeNet. And then when any traffic comes to the HTTP listener, it'll direct it towards this custom config. Going into the custom config, you can see this listener here for HTTP that will take all traffic and send it to this Python file. You may also notice that there is a filter for local host here and this is just to only redirect any requests going to local host. So I've created this Python script. I'm not going to go through it line by line because for anybody with any Python experience it should be quite self-explanatory. But what it's doing is to take a request and return a response to trigger the functionality I want to test which is the execute message box functionality. I'm going to add a bit more code into my Python script to act as if the C2 is sending a command to the malware to create a message box saying hello. And you can see that here. We wouldn't know what response the malware is expecting to execute this command, but it would take more reversing of the binary, which I won't show you, but can easily be found, especially with .NET malware, which is much more easily readable than native compiled malware when you decompile it. So BlackNet is expecting to receive the string, which will be base64 encoded to match what encoding the malware uses during C2 communications. Now, if I rerun FakeNet, the script will reply with the task to execute the message box. So restarting FakeNet here, we can see that it has intercepted the commands to the C2 and it has replied with the correct response. So the malware has successfully triggered the message box functionality. A reverser could leverage this to set a breakpoint on the message box function and then trace back to where it was called to easily reverse the malware or execute different functions to further analyze them. I hope this was a good introduction to the FakeNet tool and how to emulate C2s. It's a good skill to have when dealing with malware that connects outside of the network. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope that this was a good introduction to what FakeNet can be used for and how to analyze C2 traffic. In the next video, we'll be looking at automating config extraction, so keep an eye out for it. I appreciate all of your feedback and patience while I get more comfortable making these videos. Thank you and goodbye.